Hey guys, this is Bradley Benner with Semantic Mastery, and this video is for Peter Drew, GMB Dominator, to kind of go over how you can use the uh, non-owner verified profile finder or the unclaimed profile finder script for competition research. Peter actually asked me to create this video for you guys uh, because I had asked him to when to include some specific data in the scraping. Uh, in the CSV file, whenever he scrapes data from the API or generates the data from the Google Maps API with his uh, script. And the reason why is because there you can determine competition levels for GMBs by looking at specific criteria. And I'm going to walk through that today to kind of show you what I'm looking for so that I can determine how much of a dogfight I'm going to be in uh, in order to rank in the three pack. Um, or if I can easily identify uh, golden opportunities or slam dunk opportunities as I call them to be able to rank with very little work. So that's really what I want to walk through today. I'm going to try to keep this brief. Not a whole lot to go over once you understand what it is that you should be looking for. It's going to show you how you can get traction very quickly. Um, or it's going to show you in some cases that you're in a very competitive market and it's going to require a lot of additional work. And I don't know about you, but I like easy. <laughs> so I typically try to find areas that are going to be easy to rank in the three pack based upon specific criteria for a couple reasons. Number one, if I'm going to generate or build a lead generation asset, then I want it to rank without a ton of work, without a ton of um, investment of time and or money or effort for that matter, so that I can get it monetized quickly. If I'm doing client work, I want to also look for clients to prospect, you know, to pitch my services to where I see that it's going to be easy to get me, re, uh, for me to get them results rather quickly with limited effort, time, and money. Does that make sense? That way I can look like a rock star to them. Um, you know, yes, I can also get results for people in more competitive areas, but it requires a lot more work and oftentimes more time. And... I like to look good for my clients, so why not target prospects that are going to be easy or easier relatively uh, to get them results in a rather quick fashion, right? So then you can, you're going to look good and it's going to make them happy and uh, they're going to continue to pay you. And so anyways, with that said, I'm going to show you two results here that I just pulled using the uh, NOVP um finder right the non owner ver verified profile finder script and uh, I'm just gonna pull up the CSV files and we're going to take a look at two of them so I'll zoom in on this a little bit this one is for uh, tree services in Culpeper Virginia I do a lot of tree service lead generation work um, got a lot of clients in the tree service industry so uh, this was just one that I was looking at and this is actually the area that I'm in but I wanted to show you guys something this was the keyword I look I look for the keyword here tree removal and Culpepper, right? So that was the location that I'd set. And it came back with it looks like 13 results. And uh, if you take a look at the results here, what we're looking for to determine levels of competition based upon the criteria that I typically look for is that I'm going to show you here if I can squeeze it all in. Um, all right. So first of all, the postcode, uh, that's important. Now, in cities that have multiple zip codes, I haven't tested yet to see if I could just add a zip code into the script to pinpoint a specific zip code. Because obviously a city name, if it's a bigger city, can have multiple postal codes for that one city name, right? So it's usually divided up by population um, or sections, really. It's by geographic sections within the city. Um, but for more kind of rural areas or smaller cities and that kind of stuff they're typically only going to have one postal code so again i haven't tested to see if i could just add a postcode in the um, location field in the script to see if it works that way as well but for specifically i chose culpepper because i knew that 22701 is really our only zip code here and so i want to show you here something if we open this up a little bit what we're looking for here is the first thing that I want to look at, well, number one is in the top three, if they, if any of the profiles are non-claimed or unclaimed profiles or non-owner verified profiles, okay, whichever one you want to call it. And so if, if there was a true listed in this claimed 
column in the top three, then I know that there is um, an unclaimed profile ranking in that, that top three. So essentially the three pack for that keyword. And a lot of the times that means that with a claimed profile with a little bit of additional optimization work, you can push that unclaimed profile out of its way, right? Out of the three pack. Uh, there's a couple other indicators to look at though. I do want to point that out, but that's the first thing that I typically look at. Is it, is it claimed or, ver you know, claimed and verified? If so, if there's any in the top three that are unclaimed or unverified or any in the top five really that are unclaimed and unverified, then it means that if I have a claimed profile or if I'm targeting a client, a prospect that does have a claimed profile, that with a little bit of optimization work, I can probably push that unclaimed listing out of the way, if that makes sense, okay? So number two is that the next thing I look at is in the business address, I want to look at the zip codes to make sure that they match the postal code of the location that I'm searching. And the reason why is because uh, ever since the mobile index first change that occurred in July of 2018, it is hyper local now. Google displays results, first of all, all of the search results now are influenced by the mobile index instead of the desktop and laptop index, which used, which had always been the case until July of 2018. Second of all, any type of search with local intent is going to show uh, businesses that meet that or will, you know, meet that um, that search query will um, satisfy that search query that are in close proximity to where that search is being performed because it's usually a mobile device that it's uh, being searched from and because of geolocation Google knows where that search is being done right from the GPS settings on the phone Google knows where that searcher is at the moment that they are searching and so if it's a search with a search query with local intent then Google is going to display the businesses that are within close proximity to where that searcher is, that Google user is at the time that they perform the search. So if we're searching for um, tree service or tree removal in this case in Culpepper, then what we're looking for is if in any of the top results that the Google Maps API pulls back shows it pulling in businesses from other locations, so other zip codes essentially, then what that's saying is there's not enough businesses registered within that same postal code or zip code area for Google to actually show all, you know, only businesses from that postal code. It, me it means that there's usually a, a wide open opportunity, okay? Or it means that the businesses, let's say for example that in the top five or top three especially, it pulled in another zip code uh, that maybe from an adjacent area then it, it, it could either mean that there's not enough businesses within the 22701 zip code in this particular case for it to populate all of the results from the API uh, with only businesses in that zip code, or it could mean that one of the businesses in the one of the adjacent areas that it pulled in that has a different zip code was considered more authoritative, right, more relevant by Google, which means that they probably were optimized very, very well. But if you see one or two or three, you know, one, one or more um, zip codes that aren't within the same area that you're searching, then it typically means that there's not enough relevant businesses registered or physically located in that specific zip code, which means just by registering a Google profile there um, in that same zip code, it's likely going to get pushed, you know, into the top search results very easily because just by the nature of it being physically located in the same area where the search is being performed. Does that make sense? So in this case, all of them are showing 22701. Okay, so there's that that there's no opportunity here based upon that. But the next couple of parts that I'm going to look at is I'm going to take a look at their rating. Uh, if they have zero rating, then that means they typically don't have any reviews. So you can go double check that by looking at the review columns. And you'll see that anywhere where there's uh, it's a blank in the review columns or there's no entry, then it means that there's zero reviews. And you can double check that or confirm that by looking at the rating. Um, something else that I'm going to look at is the categorization of the, the GMB profile. What is the primary category, which is what it shows in the in this category column here? If it's 
miscategorized, then that means that it's likely uh, pulling in either it, either the GMB was optimized wrong or Google's pulling in non-relevant businesses instead of only relevant businesses, which means there's likely opportunity there. Okay, so uh, another thing I do look at is the images column, and the reason why is because if there's a lot of images posted, then it's it probably most likely the business is actually uploading images, which means they're doing SEO work, right? Because most businesses don't upload images to their GMB, they're uh, unless they are are you know doing it specifically to help with search engine optimization, or customers are actually uploading images. Now, in the cases of tree services, it's very rare that a customer will upload images to a GMB profile, um, you know, in, into a Google Maps business listing. It's very rare that that happens for restaurants and things like that. Yeah, people do that, but um, and for parks and you know stuff like that. But for contractor type services, most of the time customers aren't going to upload images to the Google Maps listing. Um, so, but if you're if you're looking at uh, like for this in in the case of the business in the number two position, they've got uploaded 127 in images. That's a lot. So that means they're doing SEO work. There's no question. So those are two of the things that are several of the things excuse me that I look at right off the bat uh, you know so right here I can tell you that there is some opportunity because if you look at the number uh, four position which is named tree undertaker they're actually in the number four position so right outside the maps pack and they've got zero images they've got uh, two reviews what are one star reviews it's also an unclaimed profile and um, so I, you know, I took a look at this earlier, and the unclaimed profile. It looks like it's got two spam reviews that were negative. So it's probably a competitor that did that. Um, they're older reviews. They didn't have any text or anything. So with that, that you know, that is an unclaimed profile that could potentially be claimed, and with some optimization work, may very well be able to push the number three position out of the way because it's un. What I'm saying is this in the number four position is unclaimed and it's right outside the maps pack well the number three position is claimed but it's got zero images it's got zero reviews and uh because the um and because it doesn't have any images or any reviews although it is claimed the one that's right below it being if it were to be claimed and obviously what i would do is certainly tell the prospect if i was prospecting you should ask your most recent customers to go review your business in Google and also you should make it a habit of always asking your current customers you know as you're completing a job you can put a link right on your invoices that you send to your customers whether you send them via email or even if you give them paper a lot of tree guys use paper invoices but you could have that printed right on the top or even have business cards made where with a big link on the back to the Google My Business profile that you hand to your customers after a job is done and you know after you've talked with them and asked them if they're satisfied with the service if they say yes then you hand them a card and say would you do me a huge favor and go review my business on Google uh, Google Maps it will only take you a moment and it would really help me out something like that I would tell this business specifically the Tree Undertaker because they have you know two one star reviews it looks like they were spam reviews anyways and I would suggest to them that they actively solicit positive you know reviews from their customers their satisfied customers to help raise that score also I would tell them that it gives you an opportunity as a, as a business owner to reply to reviews which allows you to inject additional keywords and locations into your Google Maps profile right you know thank you John for the kind words it was a pleasure performing tree removal on your Culpeper property does that make sense? Things like that that can actually help to um, increase the SEO of the GMB profile. So my point is, right here, I don't see a lot of opportunity um, in the, in the fact that they're all from the same zip code area. Looks like there's two only two unclaimed or non-owner verified profiles in the top you know 13 here. But I do see a little bit of opportunity because several of these listings have zero uh, reviews or zero images. All right, so that was one. Let me just show you another example. Um, and so I'm going to pull this up here in a second. So the next example was for handyman services in Arlington, Tennessee. Okay, so I, you know, here's the script. Uh, and what I did was I just downloaded the CSV file. Didn't return a lot of results here, but that's also a good sign, guys. If you run a um, a search through this script and it only returns a handful of results, it means that it's likely that there aren't very many businesses that are 
attempting to rank for that particular category, business category, or that keyword, right? And so that also means there's opportunity. So let me show you. Let me show, pull up the CSV file, and we'll kind of walk through this one because there is definitely more opportunity here. Now, I already know this one. Um, I actually had a, a client that uh, I worked out a lead generation agreement with, and I, I created a lead gen asset for his business, but I created it branded for his company already. Well, he never paid me. I, I generated him multiple leads, and he didn't pay me even for one of them. So I went in and literally uh, closed, you know, turned off his, it was all set up through a G Suite account, and I literally canceled the G Suite account, which deleted his Google Maps listing because he never paid me. So, and I was able to rank um, for handyman service Arlington, Tennessee, overnight just like that literally I, I verified the profile I optimized it and the next day it was a number one position so I knew there was opportunity here that's why I use this as an example so Arlington Tennessee the zip code is uh, excuse me 38002 so like I said first of all if you look here there's it only pulled back a total of five results right which means that for the the keyword handyman service the search area Arlington Tennessee Google couldn't even find relevant businesses outside of Arlington really to pull in other than just two which I'm going to show you here in a moment um, that means there's typically a lot of opportunities not a lot of competition right if it pulled back 10 12 15 then that means there's a lot of businesses kind of competing for that area even if not that specific area there's several businesses that might have that area listed as part of their service area right so so Arlington Tennessee listed in their service area so um, but you see that there's only one unclaimed profile out of these top five. Well, that's okay because first of all, there's only five. Number two, the one of those five is unclaimed. The next thing I look at is, like I said, I, I expand. Well, hold on. The next thing is categories. Take a look at the categories. You can see that one of them is Raleigh, Raleigh Glass Company, uh, and it says shower, shower Door Shop. That doesn't sound like a handyman to me. And that's in the number two position according to the Google Maps API, right? So that means that it's a miscategorized business that Google's pulling in. That's a good sign, meaning there's little competition. Um, handyman and contractor. Contractors, sometimes businesses just um, put the wrong, select the wrong first category or primary category. But if you take a look, the name of the company is Peeler Electric LLC. So it's most likely that they're an electrical contractor and they got added into the uh, Google's looking at them maybe they say handyman somewhere on their website or whatever maybe they have handyman service listed as like a secondary category so Google's actually pulling them in for handyman service Arlington Tennessee when they are likely uh, miscategorized like they it looks like their primary job from their name is as an electrical contractor so it shows you that two out of the top five are even miscategorized right and that peeler electric one is the one that's unverified or unclaimed all right so the next thing you want to look at is the actual um, and look at that inspiration homes LLC that sounds like that's even uh, you know a builder perhaps and not necessarily a handyman although it says handyman is their first category uh, I would even maybe go check out their website and take a look but the next thing I want to look at is their business address you can see here that 38002 is the actual postal code or zip code for Arlington Tennessee and two out of the top five don't have uh, are, are coming being pulled in um, from different locations so handyman services the one that's optimized probably the best should be in the number one position but it's actually located in Memphis Tennessee which is a different zip code than Arlington so my point is that Google is actually pulling them in because they probably have Arlington Tennessee Arlington's right outside of Memphis and uh, they probably have Arlington listed as part of their service area. So Google's pulling them in saying, yes, this is a relevant listing, a relevant business for this search query. However, it's not physically located in Arlington. So like I said, registering a GMB right in Arlington with the physical address located there, then it should outrank that, right? So the next thing you want to look at is, like I said before, you want to look at the number of reviews and images and the ones that have zero images. Um, and no reviews those are typically means that it's less competition because that gives you an opportunity to get reviews respond to those reviews upload well optimized images with geo metadata appended and all of that kind of stuff so I just kind of wanted to show you guys uh, with a short video how you can use the data from the GMB non owner verified GMB finder um, script to actually do competition research and look for areas that it's when you see something like what I'm showing you here on this screen here um, or this 
uh, spreadsheet, excuse me, then you know that you're in an area that you ought to be able to rank for almost literally overnight by just registering a GMB or con prospecting to a client that has a GMB that is uh, within that same physical location, that same service, you know, the uh, zip code area, and claiming it if it's unclaimed and then optimizing it well and you ought to be able to rank okay so that's really important and I just really uh, wanted to show you guys how you can use Peter's tool to actually do competition research and find the easier opportunities for you to get results this is Bradley Benner with Semantic Mastery thanks